Yes, guys, you know what time it is. It's your boy, David, at the Irish Hotspur. Ireland's number one Spurs fan. Back again with a Premier League prediction show with Charlie. How are you keeping, Charlie? Yeah, good as always, David. Looking forward to this one. Um, should be an interesting one with, of course, our massive game um, on Sunday. But yeah, as always, thanks for beyond, David. Mm. No problem at all. It's an absolute pleasure, Charlie. Really enjoy doing these shows with you. First of all, I want to say a, a big apologies. I was, I was I was very busy last weekend. I couldn't get one done. Um, I also want to say, uh, go through a few formalities. Make sure you smash a like on the, on, on the video. Make sure you smash that subscribe um, button if you're new. And also... Make sure you grab them um, a membership. The memberships are out. Get over, grab a membership. Um, but look, I'm going to run through the um, league table, our, our, our score table. So look, in, in first, we have Simon Ooh. on 64 points. In second, we have Charlie oh, on 59 points. God, I didn't even know that. In David said he'll reveal it to me um, during the stream. So, yeah, this is my first time reaction. So, I'll happily take second. Come on. Yeah, you're on. hunting down Simon, lad. You're hunting down Simon. How many, points, how many points did you say I was on? You're on 59. You're five behind Simon. Oh, this weekend's going to be a big weekend. This is massive. You've done very well over the last few weeks climbing up the Come table. On. In third, we have THFC Gaming with 56 points. In fourth, we have Kevin Murray with 47 points. In fifth, we have Adam Fox with 40 points. In sixth, we have Paul Markey with 36 points. And by the way, I was generous giving Paul Markey six because in seventh, you have the best man on the planet, a.k.a. the Irish Hot Club. The table. In seventh, also, it. with 36 points. But why that's even more impressive is because I actually forgot to put my score predictions up last weekend, believe it or not. <laughs> but the one I did take is the one I done in my preview because it's one no one can argue with. It was out there, it was recorded, it was before the Palace game. So I took that one, I got that one right. That is a four pointer. Um, mm. So in eighth, then we have um, Wayne Bonner with 28 points. In ninth, we have Runa LB with 22 points. In tenth, we have Lily White Lane with 21 points. In eleventh, we have Inot Nurse with 16 points. In twelfth, we have Lily White Blue with 16 points. Uh, in 13th, we have Lisson Grove at 10. And then we have a couple of new people. Welcome them. We have Noah on two points. We have Danny Ellis Stewart on one point. And we have Blade on one point. So look, there's the there's the there's the the table, guys. You know what to do. Put your score predictions in this video below for the weekend for all the weekend fixtures coming up. Uh, um, if you could do it in order that me and Charlie are doing the games, it'd be even easier for me uh, to calculate everything as well. So come on, Charlie. We may as well get into it. Let's go. We'll start with the first game, which is tonight. Newcastle versus Villa. Um, I'm going to go Villa on this. I'm, I'm going to be confident that Villa will win this. Um, look, Newcastle off the back of an Eli draw with West Brom. Uh, look, they're not offering much at the minute. I'm going to go Villa. I'm going to go Villa 2-0, you know. Oh, yeah. Of course, look, Villa, they've had a couple of up and down results lately, because mainly because they haven't had Jack Grealish, um, which has been yeah. a massive miss for them. I think without Grealish, they do struggle a lot for creativity. And it's just so typical. They're saying he's going to be back for against us, just like when Zaha was back for Palace <laughs> against us. So bloody typical, mm. isn't it? But look, I think they'll overcome Newcastle. I think Newcastle are just a very poor side. Um and, um, yeah, that I think they're going down Newcastle. I really, really do. They've had injuries as well. St. Maximum's out, Almiron as well, and Callum Wilson. So, there's injuries there for Newcastle. So, I think Villa will nick this one. I'm going to go for 1-0 to Aston Villa. Because I think without Grealish, they might struggle to break them down. But I think they'll get a goal eventually. So, I'm going to go 1-0 Villa. Yeah, not bad. Uh, we're both in agreement then. Villa are going to win that. The next one brings me on to Leeds versus um, Thomas the Tank Engine and Teeny Weenie, <laughs> which is a.k.a. Chelsea. <laughs> Um, do you know what? I think this one's going to be an exciting game. I really Ooh. do. Look, Leeds are on the back of a poor run. But can they expose Chelsea? I do think so. I do think so. And I don't know, you know. I, I have the feeling Chelsea's going to win it. But mm. I'm going to go with a 2-2 two -two draw. Oh, come on, David. I love that prediction. Hopefully that turns into reality. But I need it. I need it this weekend. We need not run the derby coming we up. Do. I want these yeah. fuckers to drop points. 
Yeah, we do. We really do need the likes of Chelsea, Leicester, West Ham to drop points um, sooner rather than later so we can catch them up. But unfortunately, I'm not. I think I can only see a Chelsea winning this one. I think Leeds, they've had a couple of bad results lately. They do it. Leeds, you know, on their day, they can turn up and beat anyone really. But it's just the space at the back they leave is just, they're just so open. And I think with the players Chelsea have, I think that can easily be exploited. You look at the results Chelsea have been getting lately. I thought they played very well against Everton. Um, they were good against Liverpool. We know um, getting a result yeah. at Anfield there. So I hate to say it. And we, as David, as you said, I hope you're right. But I just can't see them losing this game. I'm going to go for a 3-1 win to Chelsea. Ooh. Yeah, no, look, with Leeds, I think what I said to you over the course of the season, Charlie, was that with the way Bielsa trains them, they're always going to have a great start to the season and pick up points until until no, teams start um, gaining their fitness and stuff like that. But come towards the end of the season, I did say you're going to see them go on a dismal run. And I have said that to you because of the way they're trained. Yeah, yeah you know, they, they, it, it, repeat, it was the same in, the, in, in Championship under Bielsa that... That's why they bottled the playoffs. They, they tire season. out, they tire yeah. out, they gas out, they gas out. You know what I mean? They're only in the Premier League because coronavirus gave them the break. That's my that's my opinion on it. Um, but look, you know, I I I think they're safe. I do think they're safe, but I don't think they're going to pick up too many points between now and the end of the season. I just hope this weekend is one. Moving on to the next game, it's um the Eagle, the, the barbecue Eagle I had there last Sunday. <laughs> Come on, versus um Sam Allardyce, aka what some people call him, the Jose Mourinho, which by the way he isn't. Um, look, Palace, I did say they were going to draw against United. It happened. Yeah. Um, but I do think they're going to beat West Brom. Palace are at home, and I do see them beating West Brom. I think Zaha, you know, he will start. I'm going to go, I'm going to go 2-0 two, two Palace, you know. 2-0 Palace. Look, they are, they're, they're not going to get exposed um, at West Brom like we exposed them. The reason why we exposed them is because we have such quality players. But at home, they always keep it tight. They're hard to break down. And they're very, very quick on the counter. And Zaha produces a lot of his best performances um, at home in Selhurst Park. So for me, that's why I'm on Palace. Yeah, I think, um, look, West Brom, they've kept a couple of clean sheets lately. I thought they probably deserve to beat Newcastle, I thought. So this will be an interesting one. Of course, Palace off the back of losing 4-1 to us. I think they'll probably want a reaction in this one. And I think they'll win here, Palace. So I think that it'll be a bore fest. I think it'll be probably the most boring game of the day. Um, but I'm going to go for Palace to um, nick this one 1-0. I think, yeah, Zaha will produce a moment of magic for them. And it will be 1-0 um, to Crystal Palace. Mm. Yeah, yeah, not bad. So we're both in agreement. Then we both think Palace are going to beat West Brom. Moving on to the next game is Everton v Burnley. Oh, I think that has a draw written all over it. I, I really do. Ooh. Um, I'm going to go one one. I'm going to go one one. Oh, I think it's going to be very tight. Look, Everton look they're they're a bit up and down. But Burnley are very good defensively. That's one thing yeah. I give them. Again, Everton are not Tottenham. They're not going to expose them the way we did. Um, and look, they're capable. They, look, they bet Liverpool. They're capable of going down to Merseyside yeah. and taking away a result. And on that basis, I'm going to go with Burnley 1-1. Do you know what, David? I'm, go I'm going to agree with you as well. I'm actually going to go 1-1 as well. I think, look, Copy Everton, they had, a, they had a bad result. You just don't want me to gain points on you. That's why you're just playing <laughs> no, the same score. No, no, I think... I, no, I genuinely think this one could be a draw because you've seen Burnley, their last couple of results, good draw against Leicester, which they should have won. Against Arsenal as well, they got a draw, um, which I another correct score I got last week. So, um, yeah, look, I'm going to go 1-1. Yeah. One, one. I think Everton, they do, they are a little bit inconsistent, Everton, Everton. They do sort of struggle against these types of teams where I remember they lost at home to Fulham uh, not so long ago. But I think this one will be a draw. I think Burnley will nick a draw here. I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. Yeah, not a bad shout, not a bad shout. Same as me, lad. Um, so, look, that brings us on to the next game, Fulham City. Look, City are off the back of losing to United. They did beat Southampton 5-2 in the week. Yeah, they did beat Southampton 5-2. Fulham have got some good results at home this season. Mm, just beating and Liverpool I'm going Anfield. Go upset, you know. I'm going to go. I'm, oh. I'm going to go. <laughs> go another 1-1. I'm going to go another 1-1 here. Ooh. 
Look, yeah, you're right, Fulham. They've um, got some good results this season. I thought they were very unlucky against us. They um, got a <coughs> fantastic result against them, Liverpool and Anfield, as we know. So they'll be full of confidence. But with Man City after the derby defeat, they did bounce back with a very convincing win over Southampton. Yeah. But look, sadly for Fulham, I can only see a City win in this one. I don't think it will be. A, I don't think it will be easy for City. But I think they'll just have way too much for Fulham. So I'm going to go for two 0 um, to Man City. Two near Man City. Yeah, look, oh, they could very well beat them, but they, uh, look, Fulham have pulled off some big, some big results at home. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and Sky Parker, in fairness, he has shored them up defensively. I he think does. they might. I think oh. what's going to happen is that they might fall City into this, a false sense of security, and City just keep going four, 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 and eventually, I'm thinking Fulham might take the ball off and go up there and expose Ooh. them once. That's uh, what I'm hoping. Look, the next game is Southampton versus Brighton. Both teams are, are coming into this off the back of a loss. Um, I do think it's going to be a bit of a boring game, in my opinion. Oh, I, I don't know who to do you know what? You right. This is actually a hard one to predict. I don't, I don't know why. This just feels like a hard one to predict. Mm. Yeah, no, it does. Um, I'm going to go Southampton 1-0. I'm going to go Southampton to edge it. Oh, that's interesting there. I think, yeah, look, Brighton, Brighton, I thought, were very unlucky against Leicester. I thought they should have taken something from that game. But it's just been the same story with Brighton. They actually play really good football, Brighton. They just can't finish for shit. They really yeah. can't finish, genuinely. I'm actually shocked. I need to play more of my man, Aaron Conley, lad. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, potentially. But I'm stunned with the amount of chances they miss. Genuinely, I'm stunned. They miss their XG is around, like, they, they're sixth in the league for expected goals or something. So it's one of them stats. So if they'd finished their chances, they might actually be up there this season. Um, but yeah. look, Southampton, on the other hand, they did get that win against Sheffield United last week. Um, this time after that, they did get um, sort of battered 5 2 by City. But. Do you know what? This is actually a hard one to predict. I don't know why. There's just something about this game that's hard to predict. I don't know why. Because yeah. both teams, they're attacking teams. It could easily be a 2-2, but then at the same time, it could easily be like a 0-0. If you know what I mean, it's yeah. just one of them that's hard to predict. But I don't know. I'm going to sit on the fence with this one. I'm, I'm going to go 1-1. 1-1. One, one. One, one. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Yeah, it's it, look, it's a very tough one to predict, in my opinion. Moving on to the next game, it's Leicester versus Sheffield United. Um, Look... Of course, Chris Wilder um, is he, yeah. he's the power a power of waste. That today. was a shock. That really was a shock. Yeah, to me, one. very harsh. He took them from League One to the Premier League. Like yeah. you know, for me, I thought they were, like every, every team that comes up and has a good season, the, the, the next season they tend Second to be very poor. Yeah. And, and, and it happens for me. You, you, what you do is with with the squad he's built, right? It's come to an end. He's he brought them to the Premier League. There's some players that have come to an end. So for me, what you do then is. Go down. Is you let him go back up. down to the championship. You let him rebuild it with a bit of experience and and, and some new players that you think are gonna are, are gonna flourish and can take the Premier League by storm when you get there. And and you stick with it. He's a Sheffield United fan. He is. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's he is. It's a joke. What do you? I'm want really to make surprised. That yeah, I'm I'm shocked as well because you look at it. Look, they're already going down. There was no two ways about that. They they're down. But for me, the best thing they could do was stick with him and then hope that he can bring them back up. Because for me, he's the best guy to bring them up. I don't think there's anyone else that can bring them back up. I really, mm. really don't. I really believe that. I think he he's probably their best bet at coming back up. I really, really do believe that. Yeah. And I don't know what it was. Was he was he actually sacked or did he walk? What, what, what actually happened? I'm not 100% sure. Look, I think, look, him and the owner had a falling out. They haven't seen eye to eye the last while. And I think more so, look, he was sacked, but they're not going to say he was sacked. I think they're going to, basically, it's it's a mutual decision because, no, look, he is a fan of the club. He's took them from League One, so there has to be that sort of respect. But don't forget, they also had that dispute during the summer about the ownership. They did, so, yeah. You know, and it wasn't the guy Chris Wilder wanted to end up being given ownership of the club. So, in that regard, I don't know what's really going on there, but it's a mess at the minute. But one thing I do want to ask you is a centre-half that I probably would take to Tottenham, and I think he's he's a, he's a, he's a brilliant centre-half. I've watched him for Ireland. I think he'd be perfect for Jose Mourinho. He's not afraid to go and attack the ball, which is what we miss. And that's John Egan. And yeah. we get him cheap enough with them going down. Do you know, that, that's exactly what I was saying. I said that I know Sanchez has improved lately, but still with Dyer. I said... 
a couple of weeks ago that Darren Sanchez is a worse centre-back partnership than Sheffield United. And that was mainly because I actually do rate that Egan quite a bit. I think he's a good player, Egan. Obviously, you've watched him a lot for Ireland. They they actually have a lot of Irish players, Sheffield United. So, you'll know a bit about them. And yeah, yeah he's I the think, only one I take, though. I think I'm not... I, I think, is he what we need? I'm not sure because I just think we need a world class. I'm telling you, he'd be a very good player yeah. to bring in. I'm I think, you. do you know what, what he I'm, does is he attacks every ball, he attacks every set piece, and it's what Tottenham need. Trust me, this guy is a very, very good defender. A very you know good what? defender. I'd, and if we I'd don't def- snap him up, some team in the Premier League will. Do you know what? I'll definitely take him if we got him alongside like a Skriniar or someone like that, or maybe a yeah, Botman. That's what alongside. I mean. Like, if we yeah. can still bring in a Milinkovic or a Skriniar and bring Milinkovic, him in as well, yeah, it'd yeah, be yeah absolutely 100%. ideal. But look, yeah. we, we'll crack on with, with the score prediction. Look, Brendan Rodgers' team, you're going to see a lot of mixed results between now and the end of the season with them. Yeah, we um, need them to drop points. <laughs> look, it, it's the same thing with Leeds. They do tend to die off towards the end of the season. The European um, exit was one of that. The Arsenal loss was one of that. Um, look, I do think Leicester will win this one, though. I, 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 I'm going to go Leicester... I'm going to go Leicester training and I think Sheffield United, I think a lot of these players might not turn up for this game, you know. Ooh. Yeah, oh, I can only see a Leicester win. I thought they actually were quite lucky against Brighton last week. I think Brighton really should have taken something out of that game. And, and like Leicester, they've had a lot of injuries lately. But And look, we need them to drop points. We really do. And I, I do still see the implosion coming for Leicester. I do believe they are going to drop off and they probably won't. I, I do have a feeling they might not finish in the top four. I really do believe that because of that. I've seen signs there that we could see something similar to last season but I think they'll win this one I think it will be comfortable for them I'm going to go 2-0 Leicester I think it will be comfortable for them in this one yeah 2-0 Leicester um, yeah I do think look these these players yeah, a lot of them have been with them since League 1 you know so they're, they're big Chris Wilder fans so I, I do think they're going to struggle to turn up tomorrow but that brings yeah. me on to the next one it's the biggest one of the weekend oh. the everyone in the world is going to watch it's the North London Derby it's Tottenham Hotspur European Giants versus Gunnosaurus European whipping boys Toronto <laughs> uh, Kieran Tiny you know like um, you have you have Bobo the Clown you have Mr Mr I'm going to call Jack of the Hulk because he gets so angry and shit <laughs> yeah um, you know you have you have you have Burnt you have Burnt Leno Mr I like getting my team in trouble you have Mr Bellerin um, Mr Tree or Planty or um, Mr I'd rather be on uh, next top model than play for Arsenal you know you have a uh, sack of shit, Emil Smith, and all of all. <laughs> There's a lot of players there, you know. I think on this game, genuinely, I think they have a lot. They, 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 they've changed their squad compared to when we first played them. They've gone with yeah. a lot of youngsters. I do think their inexperience is going to show. I think we're going to capitalise on that. I think we're going to bully them. And ultimately, I can only see a Tottenham win. Look, a lot of their fans are saying, you know, they came off the back into the last North London derby off the back of a win. They got hyped up. We smacked them, shut them back up. They're doing the same now. I watched a bit of AFTV last night at the end of all their fan cams. They're talking mm. Tottenham. Oh, there's a lot riding on this one for Tottenham. There was a lot riding on the last one. We still spanked you. Stop running your mouth. Shut up. Sit back. Respect. We're the kings of North London. I'm going to go Tottenham 4 2. I think this is going to be two. a big game. Oh, see, look, I agree. I think, um, yeah. We just need to shut them up. I really, really do. I cannot stand everything about them, especially their deluded fans. And look, about the game itself, my expectation is this, that I expect both teams to turn up and play the game of their life. And if that's the case, then I think hopefully our quality can come out. Because if you look at it, the likes of Bale, Kane, Son, and even Lucas Moura, these guys can really press them into mistakes. Because look, we know with the likes of David Luiz, Shaka, if we can get under their skin, we can really get one of them sent off. I really, really do yeah. believe that. And if we can get under their skin, if we can win the midfield battle with Undombele and Hoybier, they can eat the likes of Shaka and Partey alive. I really, really <laughs> do believe that. So for me, look, it'll be a tight game. These derbies always are, apart from the last one, which was actually. In the most comfortable North London derby that I've sat through. But I'm not sure if this one's going to be as comfortable. I think, as I said, I expect both teams to be up for it um, in this one. But look, I cannot stand them. I want to fucking smash them. I honestly cannot. I hate everything about them. Seriously, I just want to smash them. Um, so I'm going to go 2-1 Tottenham. I'm, I think it'll be close. But Ooh. I think if we can if we can get up there... Um, if we can get at their weaknesses, but at the same time, they could easily exploit our weaknesses. The likes of we saw, we know we've no, had they're just not. individual they're not. errors. I think the can't score a ball. 
Saka's, you know what I mean? Saka's, Saka's the one I'm worried about. One every three months and they call him the new Thierry Henry. And look, you know, they're, they're not. They're, they're not going to cause us trouble. It's Arsenal. Yeah. I'm going to end up playing a long ball two. game because because we're going to press the shit out. Of them. So we're going to end up playing a playing long ball game. But look, I don't want to give too much away because I will be bringing out yeah. a preview. I, I can't wait. I won't give one. too much away either. So yeah, I'm going 2 1. <laughs> 100%. So look, that brings us on to the next game. It's United versus West Ham. Um, being honest, I, I would actually like United to win this one because I really yeah, don't so want to run away with the league. I really don't. And plus, we need to catch West Ham you know, as well. We, we, we need, need to catch them as well. And, you know, we need to show them. But look, you know, you've had your time. It, it didn't end in anything. All you've done was just be up there for a little while and make noise. Back down to where you belong, little guys. Good boy. So, look, I want United. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go United 3 0. But the only thing I will say Ooh. is, is that, right? Now, hear me out on this. United always struggle against West Ham. Right? Always. I did say once the European Games comes back around, United's for, um, form in yeah. the Premier League will take a dip. That has happened. And I do think you will see the case um, this weekend. But because I fucking hate the Spanners, I'm going United trainer. Come on. Yeah, look, of course, I don't think we're going to be able to catch Man United now. I think they're, what, 10 points or something. So, realistically, I don't think they're the ones we can catch. However, West Ham are really uh, definitely well in our reach because they're only, what, three points ahead of us. So, we can definitely catch them. I really, really do believe that. And, look, hopefully they can drop points to United here. I think, I think look, West Ham, they'll be solid. They'll be difficult to break down. Um, but I think, look, Man United, they <laughs> had that result in midweek um, in the last minute to um, AC Milan, where I thought AC Milan were a much better team in that game. I really, really do believe that. However, they are coming also off the back of a derby win, a 2-0 win, where I thought they were played very well in that game. Um, so, look, I think United will win this one. I think they'll continue their sort of good form in the league after the derby win. Um, I'm going to go 2-0 United. I think, I think they'll just have too much for West Ham in this one. Yeah, Ali Gunnar Shoeshiner will be um, celebrating three points like it's a trophy. <laughs> uh, moving on to Wolves. Move, move, moving on to the Wolves um, versus Liverpool. Um, oh, look, Liverpool are on such bad on the form at the minute. I know they won during the week and, uh, and what have you now. But do you know what? I'm going to go a draw here. I'm going to go one-off. No. I'm going to go nil-off. No, no. No, no. Yeah, I'm going to go nil-off. I'm going to go nil-off. Oh, see, look, as well, Liverpool, another team we would hopefully like to drop points as well. And I hate um, them. Yeah, <laughs> I know you, I know you, you really do hate them. I, I don't like them that much either. Not more than Arsenal, uh, but they're, they're up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, look, I think, look, the game's not at Anfield, so I'm, I don't know if they're going to lose because it's not at Anfield. I just like because I predicted them to lose one nil to Fulham last week, and I got that spot on because I just I just knew at Anfield it's going to happen again. Um, Wolves, on the other hand, I think Wolves they I know they're just a bit flat, really. Wolves they got a nil nil against them Aston Villa. Um, they've really missed Jimenez this season. They really have. Um, I just feel it's an interesting one. This one, I I think I'm going to go nil nil as well in this one. I think it could be a ball fest in this one. I back Wolves to st just sort of keep them out and um, get a point in this one. See, so, yeah, I'm going to go nil nil. Yeah, nil nil, not bad, not bad. But look, guys, there you have it. There's our Premier League predictions. Charlie, big congratulations on coming second. Simon, on. <laughs> look, between you and Simon, you'd be good mans to gather our opinions off when the bookies get back open for accumulators. Um, I'd definitely be hitting you up every Saturday morning <laughs> or Friday night. So, you know, get me your scores in and then I'll have a look through them and see what ones I think will win, win me some dough. But ultimately, guys, make sure you get yours in below. Go make on. sure you smash like. Make sure you smash and subscribe. Stay tuned for upcoming content. In Jersey, we trust. In Jersey, Come, we on, trust. You Come on, you Spurs. Let's fucking smash the dinosaurs. Gunnosaurs. <laughs> the <laughs> North London Derby is a Come on. It's the greatest weekend of the year. Come on. Let's, Let's paint North London white. Let's go. Come on.